If you are looking for an interchangeable lens camera, either as your first camera or a replacement for your phone or a point and shoot camera or really any other camera, the Canon M50 is more than enough to create amazing looking photos and videos. However, it has some pretty major limitations as well. So stay tuned and hopefully I'll help you decide if this camera is right for you. So without further ado, this is the Canon M50. So I'm gonna split this video into four different sections. Photo quality, video quality, body and ergonomics, and then my final recommendations and who I would recommend this camera to. So first things first, we have photo quality. The Canon M50 has a 24 megapixel APS-C sized CMOS sensor. And this is a crop sensor, so it has a 1.6 times crop to your lenses, which essentially means if you have a 100 millimeter lens on this camera, it'll give you a full frame equivalent look of about 160 millimeters. So just keep that in mind, you're gonna have a 1.6 times crop factor on all of your lenses which will essentially multiply the focal length by 1.6 times. Now this camera can shoot RAW and JPEG images and it can shoot photos in a burst rate of up to 10 photos per second. This camera also has a built-in flash for photos as well as a hot shoe on top of the camera. It has Canon's dual pixel autofocus which is their amazing autofocus system. It has 143 autofocus points and it supports face and eye autofocus for photos as well as a bunch of other versatile autofocus modes and like I said dual pixel autofocus is Canon's awesome autofocus system and if you have a lens that supports autofocus the autofocus on this camera will be awesome and then for battery life you can get up to 235 shots per battery with this camera which is a little bit lower than standard it definitely doesn't have the best battery life however when you see the size of the battery in this it kind of makes sense because the Canon 50 has an absolutely tiny little battery. So I'm sure you've seen a bunch of photo examples by now that I've taken on the M50. I've owned this camera like three or four times within the past four years since it came out. And I've gotten some absolutely stunning photos with this. I personally haven't really noticed its limitations when it comes to photography. Of course, this is a entry level camera, so it's not gonna have absolute best photography specs and you know everything that a high end photo camera would have, but it shoots up to 10 frames per second in its burst mode. So, you know, for sport photos or something like that it does pretty decent it won't do anything like 20 30 or I think even like 50 photos per second like the highest end you know five or six thousand dollar DSLRs will do but 10 photos per second is pretty good for any semi fast moving objects it shoots photos in raw so you're pretty much gonna have all the ability you need to to you know edit the photos as you need to and adjust everything from white balance to exposure contrast saturation everything like that the photo quality out of this camera is absolutely amazing especially for the price point you can get this at used nowadays for under four hundred dollars when it comes to iso performance again it won't be as good as the highest end cameras you can buy however i'm going to go over the iso right now i'm going to show you an example of photo with everything from the lowest to the highest ISO. So you can kind of see the amount of noise and grain in each ISO setting. But personally, I've shot at 3200 ISO and got great looking photos out of it with a little bit of noise reduction in Adobe Lightroom. I don't know if I would really recommend going higher than that unless you're okay with some noise being in it or applying a lot of noise reduction. But I've still had really no issues. If you have a fast like f1.4 lens at 3200 ISO, you can get some pretty good looking photos in very, very dark conditions. There really won't be that many situations where you're gonna need to push it farther than that as long as you have a fast lens. So besides that, I've really not noticed any limitations when it comes to photos with this camera. And especially if you're a beginner and if you're upgrading from a point and shoot camera or your phone, you will be able to get some amazing looking photos and really be able to grow into this camera when it comes to photography. If this is around the budget you're looking for for a camera, I would not worry one bit about the photo quality coming out of this camera. It will definitely be enough to use and grow into for a while. So that's it for photos. Next up we have video quality. 
And this is where its limitations start to show a little bit. However, I still think for video, this is an amazing option at, you know, the 400 ish dollar price point. So the Canon M50 can record 1080p video at 24, 30, and 60 frames per second. So they're pretty much covering all your bases at 24 or 30 for regular motion video, and then 60 frames per second for some slow motion types of video. However, this camera can also shoot 120 frames per second in 720p, which will give you that buttery smooth 20% speed slow motion video. However, being at 720p, definitely not the best quality. Um, it has a lot of noise in it. It's not very sharp. Overall 720p, I wouldn't really recommend for any sort of video nowadays. However, if you want to get those specialty slow motion shots where you don't worry as much about the quality, you can still get away with it. And it's still that buttery smooth 120 frame per second video. And then last but not least, this camera can record 4K video at 24 frames per second. However, it does have a hefty 1.7 times crop added to the already 1.6 times crop on this camera. Camera. Essentially, if you're in 1080p mode and you frame something up, once you switch to 4K mode, it'll crop in on what you're seeing on the screen 1.7 times from the 1080p mode. So if you have a telephoto lens and you want to record 4K video with stuff really far away, this is actually a really good feature that it crops in that much. However, when it comes to wide angle lenses, it's very, very hard to get any sort of wide angle shots with a 4K mode on the M50. Now the 4K mode is higher bit rate and it's very good quality 4K. If you're recording a static shot in 4K, 24 frames per second, and you don't need slow motion because you, know, you can't do anything more than 24 frames per second with it. It's really sharp, really good quality 4K video. However, another downside of it is the rolling shutter performance is not good at all in 4K. Um, if you're panning left to right, it's gonna look really wobbly and I'm, I'm sure you're seeing an example on the screen right now. It just looks really wobbly and jello-y. Not very good when there's any side to side motion in this 4K mode. So for most people, I would probably stick to 1080p mode where you can record 24, 30, or 60 frames per second. There won't be that extra cropping on the sensor. The rolling shutter performance will be a lot better. Also, one last thing I forgot to mention, there's no dual pixel autofocus in 4K. However, there is in 1080p mode. And so once you switch to 4K, your autofocus also will not not be very good. Honestly, I wouldn't even call it usable. It just pretty much hunts the whole time looking for focus. And pretty much all in all, I'd only recommend using manual focus in 4K mode as well. So really the biggest limitation with this camera is its 4K mode. It's almost to the point where I wouldn't even say this camera really has 4K, even though it technically does on the spec sheet. However, there is one thing that I would recommend using this 4K mode for. Like I said, I recommend 1080p for almost everybody. However, if you want to use this camera to get into filmmaking, like narrative filmmaking, you know, something that you can control all of your shots, control the lighting, the framing with everything like that, and you don't need slow motion, or you're not going to be doing any fast pans and movements, or you don't need autofocus, that is what I'd recommend this 4K mode for. Because like I said, the image quality coming out of it is very good. It is true 4K footage, so it's going to be sharper than 1080p. It's going to look really good. And if you're shooting like narrative films, you know, something that you can control everything with, this 4K mode is definitely usable, and I would definitely recommend it because of how much sharper it is than the 1080p footage coming out of this. However, that's really the only time that I'd really recommend using this. Of course, you know, if you do get this camera, definitely, you know, do testing yourself and see if it'll work for you because the 4K mode might be perfect for you for something else. But personally, um, that's really the only thing that I would recommend people use the 4K mode for is if you can pretty much control everything about it. There's no fast side to side motion. You don't need autofocus, anything like that. Besides that, the 1080p out of this camera is very good. It's definitely good enough for YouTube videos or social media or, you know, vacation videos or really anything like that. 1080p out of this camera is definitely good enough for that. And then last few things when it comes to video quality, this camera does have a three and a half millimeter mic input. So you can use something like, uh, let me find it real quick. You can use something like a Rode Video Micro to get better audio quality. You can pretty much just slap this right on top of the camera, plug it in and get much better audio quality than the built-in mics. Or even something like what I'm using right now, which is a lavalier microphone to get you know really good audio quality as well. So that is definitely a plus of this camera, having that three and a half millimeter mic input, especially when it comes to recording social media videos and YouTube videos or really anything where you wanna have as good quality audio as possible. And then for video assist features, this camera has focus peaking and a histogram. So nothing insane when it comes to video assist features like false color or something like that. However, the histogram is very useful. I pretty much use it every time I record videos with this camera. And a focus peaking actually is in video and photo mode. I forgot to mention it in the photo mode. But focus peaking is amazing if you do shoot in 4K or if you shoot in manual focus. It's really nice to have focus peaking in the camera. So one last thing to wrap up the video section of this video. This camera is intended to be an entry level camera. So it's not going to have super in-depth video features like raw video or 10-bit video or C-log or, you know, high bit 
frame rate video or super slow motion video or really in-depth frame rate and resolution and recording options. This is intended by Canon to be an entry level camera. So you really can't expect to have super in-depth features that you'd have in like a cinema camera. So definitely just keep that in mind. If you plan to get this camera specifically for a video, it's not gonna have just an insane amount of video features because the main goal from Canon was to make this an entry level camera with pretty standard video and photo features and a really compact body. So definitely just keep that in mind. All right, next up, I'm gonna talk about the body and ergonomics of the Canon M50. So this camera, first of all, is absolutely tiny. You can see in my hands, I have pretty normal or maybe even smaller sized hands and it's still absolutely tiny in my hands. I can just fit in my palm like that without a lens on it. This is just an absolutely tiny camera. It's almost pocketable, that's how small it is. And it weighs 390 grams, so super light as well. Now it does mean it's pretty much fully made out of plastic. It's not weather sealed either, so the build quality on this isn't gonna be amazing. I definitely wouldn't expect this to hold up with really any types of drops. This plastic, it doesn't feel the best quality. You know, I'd expect this to crack or break pretty easily if you drop the camera. Which of course you shouldn't drop the camera in the first place. I'm pretty much what I'm getting at. The build quality this camera is definitely lacking. However, because of that, it means it's super small and light. Now, this camera has a three inch fully articulating touch screen that you can use to go through the menus. You can use it to change your focus points, change like shutter speed, ISO on the screen. So a really nice three inch fully articulating touch screen. It also has an electronic viewfinder right in the back here. It has Canon's EFM lens mount, a built-in flash on top, as well as a hot shoe mount, three and a half millimeter mic input, micro HDMI output on the right side here, as well as a USB port, battery and SD card slots on the bottom of the camera right here. And then the same side as the HDMI, it has this wireless connectivity button. So you can actually connect this to your phone to transfer photos and videos, as well as to view what the screen sees, change settings and stuff, and almost use it as an external monitor, which is really nice. And last but not least, on the left side of this camera here, there's an NFC sensor, so you can connect your phone to this camera with NFC. That's pretty much it for the body of this camera. Of course, you have your basic buttons on the back here as well as the top, your mode dial, customizable button, shutter button, a little customizable dial up here, your basic buttons on the back. Not a huge array of buttons and dials and customizable things on this. It's a very simple camera, which again, plays right into the fact that this is a beginner camera. Very straightforward to use, very simple to use, and really, really good for beginners just getting into an interchangeable lens camera. And now on to the final section of this video. Who would I recommend this camera? to and who wouldn't I recommend this camera to? So like I said in the beginning of this video, if you want to get a camera to upgrade from your smartphone camera or a point and shoot camera, this camera is perfect for that to get into an interchangeable lens system, to learn more about manual photography, as well as having a system that you can really grow into and move up into, you know, higher and more professional photos with more expensive lenses eventually and really get anything from, you know, beginner level photos with a kit lens, putting it on auto mode, all the way up to getting really expensive lenses for it to get really sharp photos in full manual mode you know once you have a lot more experience this camera can pretty much accommodate for anything in there of course until you want to get into that professional professional high-end photography or video space where you're going to really need a more expensive camera with more capabilities also maybe you already have a few cameras or something you're just looking for a really pocketable small camera to take with you places you know that's on the more budget friendly end at around that 400 dollars price point this camera is great for that as well it's still very capable however it's tiny it's pocketable and you really won't have to worry about it as much as say your ridiculously expensive camera that you don't want to take with you on vacation or or, you know, somewhere where you could risk it getting damaged. And last but not least, personally, this is what I think the best use case for this camera is. If you are getting into social media, if you want to start a YouTube channel, or again, want to upgrade from maybe recording YouTube videos or TikToks or Instagram reels or anything with your phone, you just want to get a better quality looking video for social media or photos for Instagram or Facebook or any sort of social media as well. This camera is an absolutely perfect social media camera. Like I said, this thing is a workhorse. It creates great looking videos, amazing looking photos, photos in a tiny package at a very, very good price point if you pick one up used or even new still, it's a very good price point. It has that mic input so you can pretty much do what I'm doing here, run a level your microphone into it. You have the flip screen so if you're vlogging or again doing what exactly what I'm doing right here, I have my flip screen out in my A7S III just like this so I can see myself. You can have a good quality mic running in just like I do and get very good looking YouTube videos or you know live streaming camera for Twitch or anything like that. Photos for Instagram, photos for Pinterest, Facebook, TikToks, anything like that. 
that. That is, I think, the best use case for this camera right now. It is an absolutely awesome social media camera. I actually use this to record my YouTube videos for a while. I don't really remember which exact ones, but if I do remember, I'll link a few of those down in the description. Just so you can see the type of YouTube quality you can get out of this camera. But this thing is an absolute workhorse when it comes to social media content. And then last but not least, who wouldn't I recommend this camera for? Now this is stuff I've already talked about, but pretty much the only thing I can't recommend it for is if you want a camera for professional, really high-end photo shoots or video shoots, this just really isn't your best option. There are much better options out there if you have that higher price point to spend on these. Now that's not to say you can't use this on professional shoots. I actually use this camera on a professional video shoot as a B camera recently. I've also used it on professional photo shoots for senior photos and stuff like that. I'm mostly just talking about if you need the highest possible quality you can get, this really isn't gonna be that camera for you. Canon intended this originally to be a budget-friendly beginner to intermediate camera. So you really can't expect this to be a super high-end photo or video camera. However, what I will link in the description, I did make a video comparing a couple different cinema cameras that are all in that around $500 price point. So a little bit higher price point than this camera if you get it used, but right around the same price point if you were planning on buying this new. And those are dedicated cinema cameras that record very high quality video. So I'm gonna link that down in the description if you're looking for a dedicated video camera. However, I really just can't recommend the Canon M50 if you need just an extremely high-end camera for photos or videos. However, to wrap this video up, like any camera, this camera has its limitations and it has its capabilities and you really just need to understand both the sides, what this camera can do and what this camera can't do. And if you fully understand all of that and can work around that, you can create amazing looking photos and videos out of really any camera. So that wraps this video up. If you enjoyed this and if this helped you out, definitely go down and drop a like on this video as well as subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next video.